In Eastern European history, there has never been such a contentious love-hate relationship as that of Finland and Russia. Even considering Poland in the latter, do we see a continuity in the sourness of diplomatic relations. I guess that's supposed to make my Polish subscribers feel more connected to their Russian counterparts, right? So what exactly can be deemed controversial about Finnish-Russian relations? Well, for starters, the two people have been closely tied for a very long time, in which Finland even became a dependency of the Russian Empire. After the First World War, it gained its independence, later prompting the Soviet Union to challenge Finnish autonomy via the Winter War, or the war that became a meme according to other YouTubers. <sighs> Why do I even bother? Anywho, after the Second World War, relations between the two countries thawed and have been pretty okay even up until this point. However, such fluctuations in diplomatic relations warrant further scrutiny. To understand the specifics of how each country has interacted with one another, let us take a journey to yesteryear, Kievan Rus. What is now known as Russia was inhabited by a plethora of peoples, Slavs, Baltic peoples, and Finno-Ugrians to name a few. These vast territories were controlled by a confederation of principalities centered on the capital city, Kiev. However, there was one such principality in the far north that was slowly expanding into Finnic lands, Novgorod. However, by 1136, Novgorod achieved complete independence from Kievan Rus and took Karelia with it. By 1240, Kiev was viciously sacked by the Mongols and Kievan Rus ceased to exist. However, Novgorod managed to keep its independence. It had to concentrate on containing its unruly western neighbor, Sweden. The contested waters of the Gulf of Finland provided key trade points to either power, thus culminating in a battle on the Neva River. What amounted was a great victory to the Novgorod prince Alexander, who earned his name Alexander Nevsky. However, Novgorod wasn't the only state to profit from the disintegration of Kiev, with Muscovy slowly gaining power at Novgorod's expense. Finally, just a few decades after Nevsky's rule, the townspeople abolished the title of Prince of Novgorod altogether, and instead began to recognize the formal suzentry of an external ruler, usually that of Tver or Moscow. The result was a cold war between Moscovy and Lithuania, which led to Novgorod's occupation by Moscovite troops in 1471, and its eventual annexation in 1478. This led to the first direct exposure of Finnic territories to what would eventually become the Russian Empire. Sadly, Ivan III's grandson, Ivan IV, lost his prized possession of Karelia during the catastrophic Livonian War. It would not be until a century later that these losses would be partially reversed. At the dawn of the 18th century, Sweden and Russia engaged in a great conflict known as the Great Northern War. With a great victory of Poltava and decisive naval engagement of Hanko, Russian troops quickly occupied all of Finland and steadily advanced to the outskirts of the Swedish capital, Stockholm. It was at this moment that a peace was sued via the Treaty of Nystad. This gave Russia control of Livland, Estland, Ingria, and much of what was previously lost in Karelia. The islands opposite of the newly created Russian capital were also ceded. Such a definite expansion into Finnic-speaking territories cemented the relationship between Finland and Russia. Fast forward to the Napoleonic Wars, and the now Russian Empire is petrified at Napoleon's advances through Poland and the rest of Europe. This prompted the current Tsar, Alexander I, to initiate a strategy of expansion in order to create a buffer of his own, between the frontier and the capital. And so, in 1808, the Russian army advanced into Finland and occupied it. The Grand Duchy of Finland was thus born. As a Grand Duchy, it was an autonomous unit within the Russian Empire, having the Tsar as its head of state. As noted by Joffrey Hoskin, it even had its own laws, education system, currency, and even army. And truthfully, this arrangement wasn't bad for the Finns. 
they largely remained a loyal population to the empire, even gaining further autonomy rights during Tsar Alexander II's great reforms. For example, in the Grand Duchy of Finland, where a Swedish elite held sway, Finnish was adopted for use in provincial government and courts, later in customs and schools. In 1863, it was formally recognized, along with Swedish, as one of the two official languages. Heck of a deal compared to other groups. Yeah, sorry. Sadly, Alexander II was assassinated by members of Naronaya Volia, and this led to Finnish rights being curtailed by his son, the new Tsar Alexander III. Hmm, how original. This further led to his son, Tsar Nicholas II, enacting a final blow on Finnish autonomy. In 1898, Nicholas appointed Nikolai Bobrikov as Governor General of the Grand Duchy, with the expressed interest of fully integrating Finland into the Russian Empire as a mere province. This was further expressed by a Tsarist manifesto in 1899. Finns were particularly pissed because the Russians sought to abolish the Finnish army, Russify secondary schools, and make Russian the official language of the administration. And because of this, they immediately sent a great address to St. Petersburg that was signed by no less than one-fifth of the population. It is then no surprise that General Bobrikov was doomed to assassination by a Finnish nationalist in 1904. The consolidation of the Finnish nationalist movement during this period was particularly high due to the high nationalist consciousness that all Finnish social classes had at the time, thus transferring to the neighboring Estonian national movement, which was strongly influenced by ties to Finland, which shared a similar language and religion. And to make matters worse, revolution arrived. Russia had just performed poorly in a war against Japan, thus leading to workers and peasant strikes throughout the empire, with Finland playing no small part. And although the events of 1905 led to the creation of Russia's parliament, the state Duma, it invoked the wrath of parliamentary constitutional monarchists. These were known as the Octoberists. Thus, the revolution was defeated, and after several parliaments leading to gridlock, a third Duma was invoked. Being dominated by the Octoberists, therefore attempting to further erode the autonomy of the Grand Duchy. But amidst all of this commotion, a great war was brewing across Europe, thus keeping attention off of Finland momentarily, and on a conflict that ended up killing millions of people, World War I. And as they say, the rest is history. War exhaustion and shortages prompted a revolution on February 1917, which thus toppled the Tsarist government and installed the Russian Provisional Government. Autonomy was thus given to Finland, but with Vladimir Lenin returning from exile and Bolshevik power rising, the authority of the Provisional Government came into question. It thus culminated in demonstrations known as the July Days, where many of the Bolshevik leaders were promptly arrested as conspirators. It was coincidentally in Finland where Lenin chose to hide whilst the affair subsided. But with revolutionary fervor returning due to a failed coup d'etat by General Lavrov Kornilov, the Bolsheviks were able to launch a coup of their own, known as the October Revolution. With the disarray of coming civil war, the Finnish parliament finally voted for independence on December 6, 1917. Sadly, it was not able to escape it and in January 1918, Finland was dragged into the wider Russian Civil War, with the white forces in the north and the red forces in the south of the country. However, unlike the overarching Russian Civil War, the Finnish Civil War lasted only three months, with a Finnish white victory resulting in a campaign of repression known as the White Terror. Now, there is much speculation as to why the Bolsheviks barely helped the Finnish Reds, but accordingly, Lenin chose to use the former Grand Duchy to display to the world the sincerity of his policy of the rights of nations to self-determination. Even with the ensuing peace, the Finns and Russians continued to indirectly clash over the territory of Karelia. For example, during this period the Finnish-backed Utua government was established by Onegin Karelians and some Finnish merchants. It would not be until May 1920 when it was forced to flee to Finland, thus temporarily solidifying Soviet control of the area. 
As a result of the border tension, the Dorpat Peace was signed on October the 14th, 1920, in which Finland agreed to cede Rapola and Porajarvi to Soviet Russia in exchange for the port of Petsamo. In the next few years, such a peace did not stop further rebellion against Soviet rule in North Karelia, nor did it stop Soviet incursions into Finland itself. However, it did shape the attitudes for an eventual non-aggression and security pact between the two states. And so, with the November Armistice of 1918 ending the First World War, begins the story of an independent Finland, free from the clutches of the Russians, the Swedes, and even the Germans. Hey everyone, I'm just making an update for uh, part two of this series. Um, the history of Finland and Russia obviously covers a lot. I'm covering from Kiev and Rus all the way to contemporary times. Obviously, I can't include every single detail, but I try. So, in order to make it a bit easier on you all to uh, understand the processes happening in this long uh, time span, I've divided the video into two parts, with the first part being the one that you've just seen. The second part's gonna handle more the 1930s onward, with all the wars that happened concurrent to uh, the Second World War, such as the uh, Winter War and the Lapland War, and I'll be covering uh, Cold War politics and a little bit of the contemporary times. So, thank you again for watching, and hope to see you soon. I'd also like to take the time to thank all my patrons listed below. These videos would truly not be possible without their support. If you'd like to become a patron, please be sure to check the Patreon link in the pinned post and description.